In this video, we're going to look at how to find quartiles and construct a box plot. First, let's define what quartiles are. There are three quartiles that you'll be finding, Q1, Q2, and Q3. Q1 is also called the lower quartile, and Q3 is also called the upper quartile. Q2 is just the median of the data set, and this is something you already know how to find. Now what quartiles do is they split your ordered data set into four pieces. So let's take a look how to find each quartile. First thing you're going to do is put your data set in order from least to greatest. Then you're going to go ahead and find the median of the data set. This is your Q2, so you're really finding your second quartile first. If you take a look at the example that you see on the bottom of your screen, you'll see that we have a couple of data values listed already in order. Your Q2 is your median of your data values. In this case, it's the number 5. Next, we're going to go ahead and find Q1, or your first quartile. To do that, you're going to look at the data values that are positioned before Q2. In this case, we have the values 3, 4, and 4. We're going to find the median of these three values, in this case, which is the number 4. And this is our Q1, our first quartile. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the three values that are positioned after our median, or Q2, in this case the numbers 6, 8, and 8. We're going to find the median of those three numbers, which we have as the number 8, and that will be our third quartile, or Q3. Let's take a look at an example. All right, here's an additional example of how to find quartiles. Our data set here will be 5, 6, 12, 13, 15, 18, 22, and 50. Notice these are already in order. Now, since this is an even number of data, our Q2, or median, will fall between 13 and 15. So we have to go ahead and find the average. That means Q2 is equal to 13 plus 15 divided by 2 which is 28 divided by 2, or 14. Now we're going to go ahead and find Q1. So we're looking only at the values that are above or to the left of Q2, and that means that our median of those values will fall between 6 and 12. So our Q1 is equal to 6 plus 12 over 2, or 18 divided by 2, which is 9. Now to find our Q3, we're going to look at the values from 15 and up, and the, that median falls between 18 and 22. So our Q3 is 18 plus 22 divided by 2, or 40 divided by 2, which is 20. So that means that our quartiles are as follows. First quartile is 9, second quartile is 14, and the third quartile is 20. Let's see how our quartiles can be used in our five number summary that can be used to construct a box plot. Now our five number summary is just a summary of five values. We have our minimum value, which is the smallest value, our three quartiles, and then our maximum value. We're going to put these numbers together to create a picture or a graph called a box plot, which is also sometimes called a box and whisker plot. Now to construct a box plot, we need, again, those five numbers. Once we have those five numbers, we're going to arrange them on a number line using the picture below as a guide. So you'll see the first thing that you'll do is take these five numbers and plot them. We have our lowest value, Q1, Q2, Q3, and the highest value. The box is created by connecting the three quartiles with Q1 as the left-hand side, Q3 is the right-hand side, and Q2 falls somewhere within that box. The lowest and highest values are used to create what's called the whiskers of the box plot. Those are just horizontal lines drawn out from the box to the lowest value and to the highest value. Let's look at an example of how to construct a box plot with the data that we used before. Now we've already found our three quartiles, so the next thing we're going to do is make a list of our five number summary. Ooh. 
I had to start that one over since my dog was howling at the fire alarm. So let's start once again. We have already created our court tiles or found our court tiles. Now we're going to go ahead and create a box plot. And in order to find our box plot, we need to make a list of that five number summary. Remember, this uses the court tiles, but it also uses the minimum and maximum values. In this case, our minimum value is 5. Our uh, first quartile is 9. The third quartile, second quartile, excuse me, is 14. And the third quartile is 20. Our maximum value for this set is 50. We might think that's a little large, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So we're going to draw our box plot on a number line. Just draw any basic number line, and we want to come up with a scale. And it's actually easier if the scale is not drawn out for you, so that you could create it as far as your needs are going to be. So I'm going to label mine by fives. So I'm going to start at five, and then it's going to bring me up to 55. And again, just make sure that your scale is such that you can get your data on there. It's not scrunched at one end of the scale. You get a nice big picture overall of what's happening. So once I have my scale down, I'm going to just put points where each of these values fall. And they're going to be floating above the number line. So the first point I have is at 5. The next one is at 9. Next we're at our Q2, which is 14. Our Q3, which is 20. And our maximum value, which is 50. Now to construct the box, we're going to connect the three quartiles starting from Q1 and going to Q3. That creates our box, or rectangle. And then Q2 is just a vertical line within the box. Our whiskers go out from the box and connect to the highest value and the lowest value. All right, let's take a look at what the box plot can tell us and also what quartiles can tell us. So you might have noticed that that 50 was a little larger than our, the rest of our values. And we saw that that line had extended very far. So we're going to see how we can test for an outlier. An outlier is just something that is much larger or much smaller than the other values in our data set. To test for an outlier, we need to find something called the interquartile range, or IQR. Our IQR is found by taking our third quartile and subtracting the first quartile. Once we have the IQR, we can do our test for outliers. So our first step will be to find the IQR. Then we're going to multiply the IQR by 1.5, subtract this value from Q1, add this value to Q3. Then what that does is it gives us an interval. Any value that is less than what we found in step 3, or more than what we found in step 4, is considered an outlier. Let's take a look at the data set we had to see if 50 really is an outlier. Okay, so once again I'm going to list our data values. 5, 6, 12, 13, 15, 18, 22, and 50. Now it seems that 50 is much larger than the other values in our set. So our guess is that 50 is an outlier. Now, we want to be certain that 50 is an outlier. We just don't want to go on gut instinct. Again, it's about descriptive statistics. We want to be able to say yes, it is, or no, it isn't. We find our IQR, which is our Q3 minus Q1. Remember from before that Q3 was equal to 20 and Q1 was equal to 9. This means our IQR is 11. Next, we're going to take that 11 and multiply it by 1.5. And it's important that when you go ahead and multiply that you are not rounding any values. So when I multiply 1.5 by 11, I get 16.5. Not rounding that to 17 or to 16. Now we take the 16.5 and we subtract it from Q1. This is our first quartile. Remember Q1 from our example was 9. And from that, we're subtracting 16.5. This gives us a negative value of negative 7.5. Now we're going to take our 16.5 and add it to Q3. Remember, Q3 was 20. 
and 20 plus 16.5 gives me 36.5. Now what this does is it creates an interval of values that are good. So anything between negative 7.5 and 36.5 is good. But anything outside of the interval negative 7.5 to 36.5 is considered an outlier. Now for 50, 50 is much larger than 36.5, so that tells us that 50 is an outlier. If we had a data value that was less than 7, negative 7.5, that would also be considered an outlier. This is a test that we can use so that we can be certain that an outlier is present. And if we decide, we can always delete that outlier if we find that it is going to skew our data set. Well, I hope you enjoyed your video on quartiles and box plots, and I urge you to do some practice to create them on your own and come to me with any questions.